everyone, welcome to today's tutorial. We are going to be working with the Magical Adventure 2 collection from Echo Park. We have the 12 by 12 collection kit along with the brads, the ephemera and the chipboard stickers. The 12 by 12 um, collection kit has 12 of these um, double-sided pieces of cardstock and a 12 by 12 sticker sheet. We also added in um, six sheets of cardstock. So one of the blue cardstock, one of, two of the red, and three of the black. And what I really love about these papers, you really could turn them over and use any of the sides of them that you want to use. Um, and all of those pieces of cardstock were coordinating cardstock that go with the collection. Um, so here for picking the pages, we're, we need 11 out of the 12 sheets of cardstock, or pattern paper, sorry. Um, so really we can only eliminate one paper. And um, even though I like striped paper, the back side of this top striped paper here is the 3x4 journaling cards. And I really, really wanted to be able to cut those out and use them as embellishments on our pages. So I decided to eliminate this page. So now that means that all the remaining 11 sheets of pattern paper, I need to um, I need to use them. So even if I don't really like them, I still have to make them work. Um, so I need five accent papers and six background papers. I really like that plaid one. So that's gonna be an accent along with this writing paper. The writing paper is a nice dark background um, and it works with all the other papers. And then the back side of it is a lighter side with um, a bunch of randomly sized dots. So we really can utilize either side of that paper. So um, here I'm gonna be choosing this red paper, this red polka dot paper. Um, it's nice on the background as well. So I chose that as an accent. It goes with all the other papers nicely and it's a nice big bold contrasting color. Okay, uh, the fireworks paper again, it's a nice dark shade. It's, it's a nice color on the back side. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that fireworks paper as an accent as well. And here I'm just kind of going through trying to pick my fifth accent paper. Um, and I really wanted a yellow one. I already have the red and the dark, so I wanted a yellow one, but I wasn't sure if I wanted the plaid or the stars. Um, the, the back side of the star paper will be a little bit more difficult. Um, because you can only use one side of it because it has the journaling cards on the back, but I did decide to use that um, because I just liked the stars and I liked the brightness of the yellow. So now just looking at my background papers, I'm really not going to decide which side of these pattern papers I want to use until I see what the, the accent page or the accent pattern papers look like on top of it. I mean, some of these patterns might be a little bit too busy to have that busy of accent papers on top. So I'll use the planar side when I go to build my pages a little bit later. But here are my six final background pages. I'm not sure which side I'm going to use yet. We'll kind of see when we um, are assembling our pages a little bit later on. But you're free to choose whichever side you want as well. We have cutting diagrams in my tutorial videos and I just kind of want to let you know how to read them. So there's the number in top in inches and that's going to be the size that we're going to cut that cut piece into. And there's a number below it in a circle. So a lot of the times we're making four pages or six pages um, when we're using these cutting diagrams and all these cut pieces can sort of get very disorganized. So that number inside of the circle there represents a pile that you're going to put that cut piece into. So for, pa for a four page tutorial, we're going to make four piles and for a six page tutorial, we're going to make six piles. Um, so the numbers are going to be either one through four or one through six. So page one is going to have all the cut pieces that have a circle with the number one inside and so on and so on for the four or six pages. So now we're going to go ahead and take all pieces of our cardstock and we are going to cut one inch in one inch from the top and one inch from the bottom. And we're going to make a straight line on all four sides of, of each of these pieces of cardstock. What we're basically doing is cutting a 10 by 10 inch square out of the center of this piece of cardstock. The border is going to be put into our pile and 
the center, the 10 by 10 inch center is going to be put to the side and we're going to be cutting it with another cutting diagram as soon as we're done cutting out all of these squares. Now we're going to go ahead and cut the backgrounds for our pages. So we are going to be cutting the barcode strip off along with half an inch and then half an inch on the other side. So we're going to be making an 11.5 inch by 11.5 inch uh, square for all of our background papers. Okay, so this black cardstock is um, it's sort of fading into that fireworks pattern paper a little bit. So what I did is that yellow uh, star paper, uh, pattern paper, 
the way it layers on top of this red piece of strip of cardstock here, it normally is supposed to be kind of right there, but I moved it over to the right a little bit more so that um, my black photo mat was on top of the star paper instead of the fireworks paper. usually a blue and red cardstock um, combination fan so I actually flipped over that little border strip that we have for a mat for a 12 by 12 page I flipped it over and chose to use the yellow side instead of the red side even though it doesn't really coordinate with the red mat here it at least ties in some of that color from the yellow star paper so sometimes I like to take like a photo area, let's say like this 4x6 one, and change it out for like two 3x4 photo areas um, if I want more pictures on my page. But for me, like for trip type stuff in my general family album, I like to summarize trips because I make um, scrapbooks that are like entirely for, tri uh, for trips themselves. So like. If we go on a trip, I'll make like a 100 page album of our trip, but then when I go to my family album, let's say we took a trip in February, and I did a 100 page album for just that trip, what I'll do is in my family album for that year, in February, I'll summarize our holiday with a few pages. So like between four and eight pages or so, like uh, one year we went to San Diego, so I had group pictures of us, um, like at the San Diego Zoo and then at the Wild Animal Park and then at Legoland. So I take like sort of like a general um, a general group photo or something um, that sort of summarizes a, like a part of that trip. And I put that in my fam family album and I leave all the, the mind like the, the smaller moments, the, the more detailed storytelling for my trip album. So that's kind of how I manage trips and how, how I manage my family albums. Um, my family albums tend to be from like a January to a December. And I usually always have to, um, I guess, limit myself because I always reach like the hundred or so pages. Um, with some of these thicker pages, you can't put as many into an album. And um, so if, I mean, if, if you find yourself really getting into that, then sometimes I'll take like two albums for one year and split up that year into two separate albums. Um, but it really, back to my original point, um, you can always take an area on the page and customize it for the amount of pictures that you have. Uh, that's what I really love about using the 4x6 and the 3x4 photo sizes is that you can really change out those sizes really really well and if you wanted to get cre more creative and use extra mats um, which can just be basic like black or white cardstock as well or if you have like lots of cardstock at home kind of stockpiled you could find coordinating cardstock or use extra pieces of cardstock and make extra mats for your photos and be creative and make you know three by three photo size sizes on your pages and things like that um, so you can the whole idea behind my cutting guide really is to uh, create a foundation for you to build your pages on um, and after that you can be creative and change things up but I the whole idea is just that you get that foundation and you get the pages started so that you can get to the good stuff where you can start telling your story and you can start um, uh, just finding it easier to um, to create your your pages so this I'm just showing you here quickly like when you rotate that page for an example you can change it up so much like by rotating that page there you could take vertical pictures turn them into horizontal pictures and for the most part like that past layout there that was just there it's very square the elements are very square on it so it gives you the freedom to change the orientation of the pictures and even change the sizes up okay so now we're gonna go ahead and pull out all of our embellishments 
and um, I'm basically just using foam, foam squares and foam tape scissors and I'm also using like this piercing tool and I like to pull out all of my embellishments and have them on the table in front of me. Uh, we have our sticker sheet. I'm going to cut up the 3x4 elements here. Um, and any of them that I don't use, you can end up putting them on a card, make a mini album with some of the leftover accessories, or you can make Project Life pages and put them in your regular scrapbooks, or if you have a dedicated Project Life album just for, like, scraps. So I tend to have a lot of these journaling cards left over because I tend to save them up um, from the various kits that I do. And I always have some accessories left so what I will do is I'll actually sometimes make um, project life pages from my scraps from the different kits it depends how much accessories I have left like how many embellishments I have left over and which journaling cards I have and how many of them I have but it's a great way to make a um, more layouts that are fast and simple and easy and um, you could either incorporate those into your regular scrapbook or what I did is I dedicated like a whole year of one of my so my 2012 family album which still isn't done yet because I dedicated that album to just project life uh, or pocket scrapbooking and the reason why I did that is because I end up having a lot of these journaling cards left over and embellishments left over and so what I do is I just kind of stockpile that and I use that to make my 12 by 12 family album but I kind of do it as I collect stuff so it's not my my album isn't quite done yet because I'm I haven't specifically bought paper to finish that album, I'm just using sort of the byproducts of my other pages to finish that album. So um, if you find that you do have a lot of like em embellishments in these kind of um, pocket page uh, pieces of pattern paper left, I, I really do enjoy having, knowing that there's an outlet for all of that product. Um, because I dedicated a year to it out of my regular scrapbooking for just that. Okay, so here we're starting with our first page and um, my original intention was to incorporate a little bit more of that craft color cardstock, but I really liked how the yellow popped out on this page instead and I, I'm really glad I ended up choosing that yellow star paper as an accent just because I think it helps tie in some of the yellows that I'm trying to pull on this page. Um, so I didn't really use the whole background as like a, a starting point, which I thought I was going to. Um, but I really liked how that, how the clusters and how the journaling card ended up being on that page. Now this is a really good page if you uh, want a page that's good for like adding journaling. Because there's so much area below this photo area um, to journal with. And I didn't really need a lot of journaling um, on this page so for me I kind of wanted to fill this area because I don't need it I don't need that journaling space this time um, at the bottom there like this page not only would be awesome for journaling but to have a huge title like you could really fill that whole plaid paper there underneath the red cardstock with a huge title if you wanted your title to be a very big focal point on a page this would be a really good page to do that um, but for me I didn't want that I just wanted and so what I did is I ended up adding this 3x4 journaling or 3x4 photo area I just matted it with the spare piece of black cardstock that we had from our cutting guide and I'm just gonna kind of cluster stuff around that so I wanted to tie together the um, the top of that 3x4 photo area towards the right side of the page along with the bottom 
like the bottom area underneath the word happy but to the left side of the 3x4 photo area and I just wasn't sure what I wanted to do there. So what I ended up deciding to do um, was put some of these, uh, I can't remember what they're called, but they're like these circle elements. Oh man, I really can't remember what those things are called. They. I remember you used to look into them and you used to push the button like a cat, like almost like there was this little drop down button that, we, that you would push and you would see these different images. If you guys can think of what I'm talking about, what it's called, those things, can you guys just leave a comment below because I, I can't remember what it's called. I, I remember them when I was a kid, but my kids, I don't think my kids have ever seen that. Okay. Um, so I played around with the idea of putting these sort of scattered a few on top and maybe one or two on the bottom and then I ended up just deciding to put these kind of where I have them here on the bottom of that 4x6 photo area along the right hand side and I clustered them together I put three of them together and there um, I popped up the two bigger ones and I stuck the smaller one directly to the page and I decided to leave that bottom area blank and just sort of make another cluster at the bottom of this um, this craft colored embellished chipboard element there. And um, I used another one of those little images there to kind of tie the two, the two sides of the page together. And I didn't like the saying on that craft piece so I what I did is I covered it with an embellishment that was the same shape just a little bit smaller but it was white so it stood out a lot more and it sort of tied in with the white elements on the other side of the page but there was a little white piece sticking below that so I wanted to cover it so I covered it with another piece of chipboard that's super tiny that says wonder and again, if you want to see like close-ups of this stuff, you can go to my blog and you can see still pictures and you'll, um, you'll get, get a lot more perspective that way. Okay, so for our third page, um, I wanted to incorporate the balloons. I felt like we could do that on this page because the background is a little bit plainer and um, everything that you put on it is going to sort of stand out. And this frame here, I wanted to put a piece of white cardstock behind it so that we could use it as a journaling area. And that the, the banner, the frame banner, or the frame is actually has fireworks in it. So it kind of incorporates that pattern paper below as well. Okay, so here, I really like this, the idea of putting this little sticker that's, or that says wonderful day on it. So, but I wanted to kind of cluster more around it so it wasn't just so out there in the open. So I played around, I thought about doing something with these banners here, but I ended up moving them. And instead of cutting a piece of cardstock, what I did is I just took a embellishment that I didn't want to use. I flipped it over and used the back side of it as a white piece of cardstock and then just popped up this frame on uh, foam tape. Okay, so I don't I don't end up leaving that red banner there at the bottom. I end up moving it to the top and creating sort of a cluster with three different banner shapes up in that top right corner of the page. Uh, I, I've played around the idea of these clouds, but it just wasn't working. Um, so I used a large, a medium, and then a smaller banner and just filled up that space there. Okay, and then at the bottom what I did is I popped up this little magic with foam tape and put it underneath that wonderful day uh, area at the bottom left in the bottom right hand corner of the page and then I added two of the brads so a big red gem one and a yellow one um, and then I added one more uh, two more brads to the top the one that has the blue castle in it and a, a, and a white gem as well into the top it just the 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 brads always from echo park always have a lot of dimension and text like they add they add a lot to the page and they help to create layers and they help to create depth 
so I really do enjoy buying brads even though they are a little bit more work you need another tool and it really does help to have the piece of foam behind the page to help pierce it this um, mouse mouse and me uh, sticker came from the brads and the brad the stickers on the brads are always super strong adhesive but this time it actually the, the adhesive ripped off from the back of the embellishment so I just had to I just used a little bit of thinner uh, foam tape and just adhered it down okay so our fourth page um, I kind of struggled a little bit with the colors this one I felt like there, there ended up being a little bit too much of the polka dots but in the end I kind of I layered um, a black checkered paper on top of it and I think it helped to break it up a little bit so what I did here is I took a frame that one uh, I took a frame and then I added the chipboard sticker on top of it and they're very very similar they both incorporate like they're very white but then they incorporate the stars so they they look like they were meant to work together and then what I did is I took two of the uh, green aqua baby bluish kind of colored brads and I just added them into the holes where the where the, there were where there was holes already for that frame and then I layered it on top of this journaling card here and then what I did is I just sort of clustered around this concept so I put I direct directly adhered this magic this little red piece and then put some sayings beside it that say good times and we're such big fans and then I took a little bit more embellishments and I just made a triangle around the, those those embellishments there with the stars and so and, and, a, and a black brad okay and then I on the other side of the 3 by 3 photo area I just stuck down this little tag that says best trip ever and then at the top I just put this um, red polka dot brad in to secure it down and then at the top there's a mouse and me chipboard sticker okay so this page like I said it could be rotated in any direction so um, for me I wanted the the photos to all be vertical but if you want them to be horizontal you can just turn the page 90 degrees and it wouldn't cause any kind of it would look just as good okay so here I wanted the whole I kind of wanted to create a little bit of a scene with the clouds and the castle so I used that uh, saying you are never too old for a fairy tale um, just as a foundation for my embellishments to kind of anchor them onto the page and then that um, castle is already a chipboard sticker so it has dimension on its own what the cloud on the top is also chipboard it doesn't need extra embellishment um, but I did pop up that second smaller cloud okay and then I finished it off with two other words that say never grow up in magic and then put um, the black star brad just there to, to help um, create a little cluster there okay and then in the top corner I put another I popped up another piece of embellishment that says magic and then added a very vertical long strip of words to tie it all together at the top as well that says smiles from ear to ear and once you add like once you add the photos onto the page I think that it'll make the photos really pop on this page you don't really need to do too much else okay so for our last page so this page what I love about this so this page is a pretty busy page on its own and I didn't want to I really did want to use this banner but I just it's just this page is too busy for it and so I ended up not using it but what I did is I used this 4x6 photo area as an anchor for all of my embellishments so pretty much all of my embellishments have to touch my photo area so that they're not floating on the page somewhere else and then what I do is I basically work out from my 4x6 photo area, add embellishments, and then add embellishments to those embellishments so that they're kind of all um, layered kind of over and on top of themselves. Okay, so I really wanted these two um, tags here to look like they were actually tags. So I put the bread through them and 
and kind of anchored them to the top of that photo area. And I knew I still needed a little bit of something there, but I kind of moved away from that for now. And I, because this best trip ever 3x4 journaling card was flat on the page, I knew that I wanted to create depth around it with my embellishment. So everything around it is either going to be a chipboard sticker or it's going to be popped up. Or it's going to be a brad, which has an dimension on its own. So basically there won't there wasn't going to be any embellishments next to it that were going to be the same height as it. Okay, so what I did is I just popped up those balloons, but I left the bottom stuck to the page. So the balloons are popped up, but the strings are behind that chipboard element that says smile, uh, say cheese and repeat, which is like that craft colored one. And then I popped up the ticket, the black ticket, I popped up this uh, this square that says collect moments not things and then I finished it off with trying to create a triangle with the brads. So I added a blue big one at the top, a red one above the ticket and then a white one floating below uh, the best trip ever journaling area. And then what I decided to do was put this mouse and me small banner kind of just at the top of that 4x6 photo area and I really liked how the page turned out so I quit there. Okay so I really hope you guys enjoyed um, the Disney or theme park inspired pages today. Um, I would uh, love to see your guys' pages if you've made any with any of my uh, from any of my tutorials. Um, just go to um, Instagram and you can just hashtag simple cut creations um, or you can email them to me uh, at simplecutcreations at hotmail.com. Okay, and we will see you next Friday with a new tutorial.